Oh, dear Father. We sang the song, but now we're going to say it. Lord, be in this place. Let your presence be in this place, Lord. That's why we're here. We're not here for me. We're not here for each other. We're here to be in your presence, Lord, to hear your words directly from you, Father God, because the Bible, the words in the Bible are directly from you. That is you speaking to us. So, Lord, we're ready to hear you. We're always ready to hear your words. So speak to us now, Lord. Open our eyes. Open our spirits. Give us what you want us to learn this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Mystery Babylon, the whore. That's what this teaching's on. If you take your Bibles, Revelation 17, we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Now, verse 1, And there came one of the seven angels. Now, we're not sure who this angel is in the Bible. It just says one of the seven angels, which had seven vowels, which means bowls of wrath, and talked with me, with John, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And this is what the angel told John. That he was going to show her, show him this great whore. In Revelation 20, chapter 2, verse 20, it says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou hast suffered that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce many servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now we're going to find that this whore is like Jezebel. This is what she wants. Do the same thing Jezebel did. And so we need to find out, well, what does it mean when it says sit upon many waters? Well, if you go down to verse 15, it tells us, and he saith unto me, the angel, the waters which thou sowest, with the whore sitting, was the whore sitting, are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. So this whore, she represents the dragon. But this is what she's sitting on, these, these nations, these people, that's what she's sit, sitting on. And she has power over the loss. She has power over the loss. And it tells us again in verse 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So she had power. She had power. And we're going to see just exactly what she had power over. And this is, this is like I said, this is, I believe, okay, that this has already started. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. But in verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now these are all the false religions that we have, and the governments. Not, and we're speaking about Rome, we're speaking about Europe, uh, United, all that over there, United Nations, uh, United Kingdoms, whatever, you know, all overseas, that's the area we're talking about. They're operated by men, and they're following. They're doing what this great whore wants. Not knowing, you know, these are just regular lost people doing what they think. Just like our President Biden. He thinks he's just, he's doing these things, all these awful things, all these sinful things. But he doesn't know that it's the devil leading him to do this. Okay? Now, the kings... These kings is of one religion. And they gave their power and their strength and their kingdom to the beast. Down in verse 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Talking about these religious, right? At this time, we're talking religious leaders and political leaders. All, they're all in one boat under this whore, okay? 
Now, they've committed fornication with, with her by idol worship, you know, uh, whether it be gold, silver, brass, wood. Uh, believe it or not, no, this is, like I said, it's already started. This started a while back, but they even have the image of the Virgin Mary and the saints. This, these religions and political, which is getting there, this is what they're doing already. We already know that. I mean, Catholic religion is a very, very big religion. <coughs> very big religion. And they've been doing this a hundred years. They've been doing this for about a hundred years already. That's why I said this has already started. And it's mainly been under the influence of the Roman Catholic Church as far as the religious part. Now, I don't like the Catholic religion. I pray for the Catholic people because I love the people. But the Catholic religion, we'll see where it's coming from and what it's under. It says she has made them drunk and intoxicated, intoxicated of this kind of belief is what it's saying in Revelation 14, 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So that's where verse 13 is talking about, what it says in Revelation 14, 8. It's, it's, it's her. She's doing all this. Now, even some churches now are fallen. They're falling from the true words of God. And we'll know more about this when I start the teaching on the cults. Okay. They've, they're committing what she wants right here, what we're talking about. There are churches that they are committing spiritual fornication because they're taking other beliefs. And we're talking about churches of God, not cults. We're talking about churches of God, God who's doing this. And we'll learn more, like I said, on that one. Let me just say this real quick. Religion, the Lord don't give a fig about religion. He doesn't care one little bit about religion. Because religion is what killed Jesus, right? right. So uh, when people, when I talk to people, oh, I'm Baptist, I'm Catholic, I'm, I don't care what you are. I don't care what religion you are. Do you know and do you walk with the Lord? That's what I want to know. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to know. Now in verse 3, so he, the angel, carried me, John, away in the spirit, in the vision, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet color beast. Again, referring to the false religions and the, and the governments. We already know that she's sitting on them, right? We learned that already. Or it could also, it's her, but it's also, it's speaking about the Antichrist also. Even though she's over the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not over her. She's using the Antichrist, okay? And it says, full of names of blasphemy, meaning all religions that have another way of salvation, that's the blasphemy it's talking about, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, this is the whore that we see in Revelation 13, 1. The whore. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of, of blasphemy. The, the people of the earth will accept this religion. And I'll get more on that in a minute. But they, they're going to accept their faith. They want to have faith in something. And right now, that's where it's going. Yeah. Like I said, Christianity is going downhill. Christianity preaches there's a heaven, but Christianity also teaches there's a hell. Right. People don't want to hear that. Right. You got all these religions here, cults. Now, those cults also 
And nine out of ten of them don't believe in hell. And we'll learn, like I said, we'll learn more about that. I would love to belong to a religion. I'm not going to hell. Right. You know? Well, that's why Christianity under Jesus is dying. Now, the seven heads or the seven mountains that, that that's in Rome, Rome is known for their... Uh, Seven hills with seven kings, governments, and all of them have the horns, ten horns. And on the ten horns are ten crowns on their head. I'm not going to go too much. In fact, I'm not going to go hardly any, uh, do hardly any of this because what the teaching is on Mystery Babylon. Who is Mystery Babylon? And when it gets to the seven horns and all that, I'm not an expert on the five major prophets in the Old Testament. I'm not an expert on it. I haven't really studied it that deeply. So I can't really tell you what these symbols mean. Okay. Now remember we read in, in verse 15 of chapter 17, the waters which thou sawest, where the, where the whore sitteth. This is what John is speaking about. Here in verse 3, we see at the same at this time, the whore or the Antichrist, right now, like I said, they're the same because she's leading the Antichrist, mm -hmm. is riding a false religion and governments. They're riding on the religion and governments. And they, they're doing it now. Yeah. That we can see now. And in the mid-tribulation, this is when we're going to start running. That's when they're going to start running all religion and government. The, the, the Antichrist, he'll, he'll be the one leader that this world's going to have. And this is, this is what's going to happen. Now, verse 4, and the woman was arrayed in purple. Now, this color represents royalty, prosperity, wealth. That's what this color represents. And scarlet, scarlet color, which scarlet colors indicate the blood of the killing of the believers. We'll see that. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Now these are false religions that are rich. We have false religion. We have the Catholics are a rich religion. Uh, the Mormons, which there's a cult, that's a rich religion. So it's, that's what it's speaking about right here. Having a gold cup in her ha hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications. We have these religions that are rich, rich, rich. But they're not preaching the true word of God. They're not. And this is what it's talking about. This is describing some of the religions we have today. They look good on the outside, religious on the outside. I mean, I once had, was talking to a, a Baptist person, and they left the Baptist church to go to the Catholic church. And I, you know, I just asked, I said, well, why did you do that? Well, I feel more religious in the Catholic Church because of the candles, the statues, because of all that, she felt more religious. Yeah. Well, this is how they're getting them. Yeah. This is how they're getting them. But on the inside, their hearts are as wicked as, as can be. Right. They're just religious on the outside, but they, they still have a wicked heart and they haven't given it their heart to the Lord yet. Right. And this is what James 4.4 4 is talking about. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Acting as the whore, that's what it's talking about. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, you know, you, being a friend is you act, you believe, you walk like the world. The Lord says, is an enemy of God. Is an enemy of God. So our families that are lost, our friends that are lost, they're an enemy of our Father. They're enemies. We don't look at them that way, do we? We don't look at them that way. Well, if you're, if you're an enemy of my Lord, my God, my Savior, then you're my enemy. But we don't look at them that way. But we should. With spiritual eyes, we should. Because what does the Lord say? Love them. He says, love your enemies. And if you have family that's enemy because of what we just read, 
then pray for them. That's what we need to do is pray for them. This beauty is a sign of, of wickedness. All this beauty, it's a, that's the devil. I've already told you, the devil is beautiful. The devil was the prettiest angel as Lucifer. So when he attacks us now, he's not going to attack us. Well, maybe some, but mainly he attacks us on beauty, on pleasure. Las Vegas. <laughs> that's beautiful over there. All those lights, but it's all sin. But that's the way he attacks us. He attacks us in many ways. And most of the time when he attacks us, he attacks us that stuff that look, that look beautiful, stuff that is pleasurable. That's the way he attacks us. Unfaithful, unfaithful religion. That's, I mean, that's what we're talking about. In the time of Jesus, it was the religious leaders in the time of Jesus who hated, who hated him, the religious leaders. And we'll see later, this has been going on. But what I'm showing now, Babylon, mystery Babylon is today. Yeah. Stuff that's going on now and that's, gonna, that's coming about, okay? <laughs> Purple and, and scarlet were the colors of, of rulers, political leaders. Mm -hmm. That's what this verse is talking about. Now verse 5 and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abomination of the earth. Now, the forehead symbolized that all these religions were made by man and not the Lord. This is all symbols, okay? Where it's the, woman, the whore is not actually a woman, okay? It's not actually a woman. But and the name on her forehead is, is symbolizes how religions and political leaders are following her. Yeah. Mystery Babylon means spiritual. It's a spiritual. It's not the actual city of Babylon in the Old Testament that we've read about. But she's doing what Babylon in the Old Testament. Yeah. She's doing exactly what they want. The way Babylon treated the Jews and the Jews turned away from the Lord and started living the way they were living. But this is what she's doing today. This is, I, that's why it's called Mystery Babylon. People don't see it. We got all these religions that don't see it. We got all these political leaders that don't see it. And part of the reason is they're lost. How are they going to see it? How are they going to know? The uh, Old Testament Babylon, they were turning people away from God to their beliefs, to their false gods. And like I said, this is happening today. Ah. Mystery Babylon. That's what this teaching is on. What is this whore doing today? Which, like I said, Babylon back then, that's a good picture of what's happening today. Read the Old Testament about Babylon back then and what it did to the Jews, to God's people. And all the symbols that it shows here, it's all against the Lord. It's all against the Lord. They corrupted the Jews with their false religion. Is that what's going on today? Like I said, in the cults, we're going to find out the cults, they're grown like wildfire. And I'll probably say it again when I start. But There, there was a time when America sent missionaries over there, overseas. There was a time when we did that. But now, they're coming over here and teaching, the, teaching us their, their God. When it used to, it was just America going over there, but now they're coming over here. And it's working. There's only two religions. If we don't worship the Lord God Jehovah, then we're a spiritual whore. Because everybody has a God. It might be them themselves, but everyone has a God. And if it's not the Lord, God, Jehovah, or Savior, then you're committing spiritual adultery and you're just like the whore. She's a prostitute trying to get others, selling her, not her body, selling her what she believes in. 
And like I said, we can see there are churches that fit that today. Exactly what we're reading, exactly what's going on. We have churches that fit that today. And some of these, uh, the way you'd recognize them is one of the ways. Some of the ways are just plain out and open. You can see it. But some of them are churches of God. But little do we know when a church of God says you've got to accept Jesus and, and, they put an and on there, Jesus is not enough. That's what they're saying. Jesus, oh, you can accept Jesus, but you also have to, that's pretty much telling you, hey, they're going in the wrong direction. They're going in the wrong direction because in the Bible, the Lord never says you have to accept me and. Right. So anytime you go to a church or hear of a church, they say accept Jesus and stay away from it. Stay away from it. They're just showing Jesus is not enough. That's what they're saying. That's exactly what they're saying. When they're saying Jesus is not of, enough, should we belong there? Don't believe. No. They have some that teach you out the opposite from what the Lord says. God became a man. Well, you got, well, especially cults. You got religion out there that says we become gods. The Bible says God became a man, but they're teaching we become gods. Right. We'll get more of this on the, on the next teaching, okay? Now, when we're in spiritual prostitution, this is what comes with it. Nahum, chapter 3, verse 4. Because of the multitude of whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. And who's the well-favored harlot? Whore. The mystery of witchcraft that sells nations through her whoredom we're talking about spiritual here families through her witchcraft now the, the word whoredom refers to all kind of idol worship that's what it means uh, to creatures instead of worshiping the creator they worship statues creatures people and witchcraft well that almost means everything that goes with we know about witchcraft. So that's nothing but <clears throat> wicked and bad. Yeah. So and this is the way we belong to a false religion. The first cult, the first cult, and I've taught on this before, but the first cult was after the flood. And this happened back in Genesis. <clears throat> Which what we're going to read is, is led by the Antichrist. How many, you know, there is the Antichrist, the man that's going to run everything. But we've read in the Bible that the world had, we have many Antichrists. Right. Just like Jesus is Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the light. We're lights too, but we're little lights. And the Antichrist is the little Antichrist that the Bible speaks about, and there's many. It started way back in Genesis. And it started with, uh, uh, well, let me read Genesis chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. And Cush begot Nimrod. And Nimrod became a mighty one in the earth. Now, Nimrod means rebel. That's what it means. And he became mighty. That's what the Bible says. Now, Babylon religion was founded by the wife of Nimrod. That's not a good show. <laughs> she was a high priestess of idol worship. Idol worship is a big thing in cults and false religions. Uh, and like I said, even churches of God. I can just stop right here and, and do another teaching on uh, our churches today. Yeah. Our churches today. <laughs> Well, I won't go there, but the, our churches today, let me just say this. Our churches today are totally getting away from the word of God. Yeah. Totally getting away from it. In verse 9, and he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. He was a mighty hunter. But we're going to see, what we're going to see, what was he a hunter of? 
He was a mighty hunter, but a hunter of what? Now verse 10, and the beginning of his, the beginning, this is why I say this is the first cult, this is the first antichrist attack on people. And the beginning of his kingdom, his kingdom was Babel. And Iraq and Achai and Kalim, Kalim, whatever that means, in the land of Shinor. His kingdom was Babel, which means, Babel means confusion. I mean, these words, we need to pay attention to these names because all these names have a, a meaning. And the way I find them out is through my study, through my uh, books that I have to study. The Hebrew uh, dictionary, the Greek dictionary, and I, I can look up these words and they'll tell me what they mean. So that's how I know this. <laughs> now let's go to chapter the next verse, chapter eleven, and see what Nimrod wanted to do with his with his kingdom. Genesis eleven, verses one through four, and then seven and eight. Verse one: And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they speaking about Nimrod and his followers, he already had followers, journey from the east that they found the plain in the land of Shinor and, that, and dwelt there. Now this is referring to chapter 10, verse 9, what we just read. Nimrod, hunter of men. He was a hunter of men, not animals. He was a hunter of men for his, for his kingdom. He was a hunter of men. In verse 3, And they said one to another, Go, two, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Now this is the beginning. This is cult. This is cult. This is cult. And they said, Go to let us, not the Lord, let us, Build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. That's another way to, that's another way to heaven, right? They said, we're going to make another way. We're not going to go through this Jehovah God. Well, back then, they didn't have Jesus to Christ yet. So it was Jehovah. we're not going to do it Jehovah God's way. We're going to make us have a way to heaven. Us, men. And we see that today, right? And let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. They wanted to make their own way to heaven. So when you go, if, if you come across a church or you know someone and their way to heaven is not the Lord Jesus, get away from them. Because they've made another way. They made, some man has started a, a religion, a cult, and they're making their own way. And like I said... I can't say right now because all, it's all in the teaching that's coming up, all right? And then verse 7, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their languages that they might not understand one another's speech. Now, this is what the, the Lord God said. Go, let us, let us, let us. Who's God speaking to? Genesis 126. And God said, let us make in our image. He's speaking about the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's, that's the us. And he could, it could be the angels in there. But when he says, and make them in our image, well, we're not made in the image of the angels. We're made in the image of Father, Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, right? So, so they were of one language, but now there's many languages. Well, I wonder how all these langu languages come about. Well, the Lord just showed us how all these, how the, how all these different languages came about. Amen. Amen. And in verse 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. So he stopped it. Stopped it dead in his tracks. Amen. <laughs> this is what's happening at the end of the tribulation, the end of Christ. The kingdom will be destroyed, just like he destroyed this one. He's going to destroy it at the end of the tribulation. He's going to do it again. 
Any religion that has another way to heaven besides Jesus is not a church of God. Remember that. Remember that. They were scattered, but they took their beliefs with them. That's why we still have false teachers and cults today. Because they were scattered, but it didn't stop them from believing, yeah. having their beliefs uh, turned over to other people who, who would believe them. So that's why it's still going on today. We have different denominations. Okay, we have different de de denominations. But one thing we all have in common, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Jesus came and died for our sins. Jesus gave his blood for our forgiveness. Jesus gave his blood so we could make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's one thing these will these religions, these denominations believe in. We all believe in that. They rose on the third day. Amen. <laughs> but the scriptures, we have differences on scriptures. I have a brother. We differ on some scriptures, but he's my brother. Because like I said, this we believe in this. Everything I just said, we believe that. Now, Scriptures, yeah, okay, we might uh, have different, well, we have different opinions on it, but we're still brothers, okay? We're still brothers. Uh, John thirteen thirty four, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. Even though he might look at this verse as meaning this, and I might look at it and think, well, I think it means this, but he says we need to love one another. As I loved you, that you also love one another. Now these are denominations, churches of God. Okay, We might have our differences, but they're churches of God. And we need to love each other. I mean, my, me and my friend do. We have our differences, but we love each other. He's my brother. All right? Now back to Revelation 17, verse 6. It says, And I saw the woman drunken with the bloods of the saints, and with the blood of the mortars of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration, meaning great amazement. This is what John is saying. Uh, these saints, is speaking about, they're the saints that they've, they, they've already made it to heaven. We're talking about the blood of the saints. We're talking about the Old Testament saints, Abraham, David, and all that. That's, that's what it's talking about here, the blood of the saints. Now, the blood of the mortars of Jesus, it shows two sets here. Those who have already gone in the Old Testament, but then it says the, the mortars of Jesus. We know who the mortars of Jesus was. It was the disciples or anyone who stood up for the Lord and were killed. We see that False religion, once we recognize it, once we recognize it with our spiritual eyes, uh, they're always against true religion, which is the Lord's. They're always against it. They always go the other way. And this is what all these false, well, this is what we're learning, that the mystery of Babylon, she's over all these false religions, wanting to go opposite from what the Lord wants or what he says. Mystery Babylon. Now in verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carried her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. There's those, there's those heads and horns again. <laughs> and it's, but, it's, but the verse says right here, The angel said unto John, why do you look surprised? Why do you look surprised? I will tell you about the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her. He's doing her will. That's why he carries her. He's doing her will. The whore, she ruled the Antichrist, the system of the Antichrist. She ruled it. She used him to complete her purposes. 
mystery bat, this this horror. It's almost it's like she's the number one devil. Because yeah. she's totally going against our Lord and she's using man, the Antichrist. Remember, Antichrist is a man. Mm -hmm. She's using him to get her purpose, what she wants done. Yeah. She's using him. In verse 8, the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into petition shall be damned, was what this is saying. And they, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose name was not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. That's an easy verse to understand, huh? <laughs> now, it does, what it's speaking about, the beast is not alive. Now, not yet, but he's going to be. He's going to be. This is tribulation period, okay? Remember, this is tribulation. We're mainly talking about the tribulation, but it's happening now. With this teaching and the teachings I'm going to be doing, it's mainly because we're in the end times, and we need to recognize all this. Remember, the devil, he can, dis he can disguise himself as a saint. Disguise. Not be a saint. Disguise himself. So that's why we need to know these things. And I'm starting here with Mystery Babylon. This is tribulation period because here the, the word all is used in verse 4 and it says they worship, they all worship the dragon. Now in the tribulation, they will worship the dragon. But you have people who will not. Yeah. You'll have people who won't take the mark. But it'll cost them their life. They'll cost them their life. But if, if you don't give your life. I mean if you don't take the mark of the beast. Well if you do take the mark of the beast. You're worshiping the dragon. Alright. Now also in verse 8. It says all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. In Revelation 13.3. It says, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. And this is the Antichrist who people thought he was dead. They thought he was dead. But then he came back to life. And that's why they worship him. They think it's God. You know, only God can do that. Get killed and come back to life, right? Well, that's wrong. That is wrong. The word as. Like I said, these little words in the Bible, we need to read them. We need to understand it. It said as unto death. It didn't say he was dead. But the people are going to think he was dead. But right here the word says as. Like, like if he was dead. So he didn't come back to life from the dead. People missed that. And they wanted, well, if John F. Kennedy who got shot in the head, who, who was killed, if he would have came back to life, how people would have acted. Right. <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like that. You know, it's, 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 it's going to be a miracle. Well, this is what's going to happen with Danny Christ. Because all the people know about him already. We had a teaching on this. That every name was put into the book of life when they were conceived. Yeah. Our names were put in the book when we got born, physically born, not born again, physically born. Uh, Ephesians 1, 4, according as he had chosen, speaking about the Lord, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. He had already, he already considered us being in him before the foundations of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before his, him in love. This is what the Lord wanted. Yeah. This is not what he got. But this is what he wanted. He said, I'm going to put y'all all in the book of life. Because it's God's will that we all be saved, right? right. So he says, I'm going to go ahead and put you in there. From the beginning, he wanted all of us to be saved. But many didn't want to accept 
his salvation. Many. Your name, our name is there until we finally reject the Lord. When we finally reject him, no, I don't need him, I don't want him, I don't believe in him, blah, 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 whatever it may be. Well, Revelation 3, 5 says, he, he that overcometh, speaking about believers, right? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, amen? <laughs> and I will not, I will not plot out his name of the book of life. Because he is living for me, I'm not going to take his name out of the book of life because we're already there. Yeah. So because we didn't reject him, he says, I'm not going to take your name out of it. Amen. So that's what I'm saying. All of us, our names are in, in it already. Not when we get born again, when we get born physically. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Is he good or what? <laughs> he says, I'm going to go ahead and put you in my book. Our name is plotted out, taken out of the book of life. And this is what happens, Revelation 20, 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So when, that, when our name, when people's name are taken out of the book of life, where are they going? They're going to hell. I mean, that's the bottom line. There's no ifs, ands, or buts here. There's no middle. There's no gray. You're either in the book of life or you're not. And if you're not in it, hell. The lake of fire. Now this goes with uh, chapter 17, 18 that we, just, that we read already. Revelation, uh, it says, The woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Like we saw before, this is, like I said, Rome, yeah. United Kingdom over there. Like I said, and they're famous for their seven hills. I'll tell you the truth, I didn't know about this until I started studying. that. But they are known for their seven hills. The seven heads are located in Revelation chapter 17. From here through verse 11, where the imagery of the seven mountains is used to refer to, to the great kingdom of the world, We are told that five have fallen, one is, and the, one, the other has not yet come. This is all in this chapter right here. But like I said, uh, I am not going to go into that. I'm not, because I don't, if I don't know it, I can't teach it, I can't preach it. Yeah, yeah forgive me for that, but I don't know about that stuff. What I do know about it, though, but the kingdoms of the past, it's speaking about Egypt, Assyria, Babylon. Persia and Greece, yeah. the kingdoms of the past, and the current kingdoms is like United Nations right now. United Kingdoms over there in Europe, that's now. And the one yet to come is the Antichrist. That much I do know. Yeah. I can tell you that much. That's pretty much the basics of it. He will control the ten kingdoms, the United Nations. He will control them. And it will expand onto the world. Right now, it's th this just them, but it, it, it's going to be. Oh, he will command the whole, that's what the Antichrist. He's going to command the whole world. Right. And the kingdom of the Gentiles, us, which we'll see that in verse eleven. But like I said, I'm not going to get on that. I'm just giving you a little basics real quick right yeah. there. If you really want to know more and know more in detail, go read the five major prophets right. in the Old Testament. Read them and understand them. Don't just read them, but read them and study them. Yeah. That's why I'm not too big on Revelation because I've read them, but I tell you guys, the reason I'm here is to help y'all walk with the Lord today. Today. The future, you know, like this here, a little touch here and there on it, okay, but I'm not a revelation God. Well, yes, I'm a revelation person, but not the book of revelation. I like revealing who Jesus is, okay? <laughs> That's me. 
It really gets deep, okay? It really gets deep. And if you want to know more about Mystery Babylon and these hills and these crowns and all that, then you, this is what y'all need to do. Me, myself, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to I'm not gonna do that. Um, like I said, I, I'm going to give you scriptures that will help us walk today because we need the help today. What did the Lord say? Daily. Daily we seek him. Daily we say, we say, or we ought to, daily we wake up and say, Lord, what do you, you have for me today? We don't wake up thinking, well, I'm going to do this today, and I think I'm going to do, no, well, no. We don't, how many people do that, though? We should wake up and say, Lord, what's your will? For? That's what he said. What is your will for me today? Amen. Is there any greater way to start your day? Well, what little bit I gave on the mystery battle line, I hope, I hope it helped y'all. Yeah. But that's as far as that's going to go. Yeah. Mystery Babylon. I wanted to know, I wanted y'all to know who or what is Mystery Babylon. Yeah. Now you know. If you were paying attention, now you know. <laughs> Thank you, dear many Father. Thank you that you give us everything we need, all the information we need, everything we need to know that we need to know, not want to know, what we need to know, you give us, Lord. So thank you, Father. You cared so much about us. You care. You love us so much. You wrote this book for us to know, for us to know, not have a mystery about anything, but for us to know what's going on, what's going to happen, what's happening. So thank you, Father. Thank you for opening our eyes to this so we can warn others. This is why you give it to us, so we can warn others about this. So thank you, Father. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, your spirit that lives in us. Oh, Father God, oh, how we need your spirit in us to walk in this lost, wicked world. But we do it in, in, in we do it with rejoicing because no matter what comes our way, we rejoice. You said rejoice. No matter what sufferings we might go through, not, not might, we will. You said we will go through sufferings, tribulations. But Lord, you're with us. You're with us to see us through them. So thank you, Father. That's why we rejoice because we're not going through whatever it is. We're not going through it without you unless we want to, unless we want to. But we don't have to because we do have you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.